Hi, I'm Renata Clanton Moyd. I'm a communication specialist with the Cumberland County Schools and your host of Get Connected. During this monthly show, we highlight numerous educational topics that face today's student, educator, and parent in the Cumberland County Schools. With a new school year comes new and exciting things in the classroom, and this year is no exception. As students of all ages return this fall, they'll be immersed in more rigorous and complex learning learning that aligns with college and workforce expectations on this edition of Get Connected. It's never too early to start reading to your kids. There are amazing possibilities when you open a child's mind to reading. Explore new worlds. Read. It's fun to sing. Zippity zip zip zin zin zin. Dance. And play music every day. Yeah, go for it. Doing something artistic inspires creativity and helps you succeed in school and life. Hooray! Play music, paint, and dance together as a family. Come on, team! Blast off with the arts. Blast off! For 10 ways to add the arts into your life, visit americansforthearts.org. Again, thanks for joining us for this edition of Get Connected, where we're talking with Allison Violet, the Associate Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction in the Cumberland County Schools, Jane Barnes, the Executive Director of Elementary Education, and John Gibbs, the Executive Director of Secondary Education. Allison, Jane, John, welcome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Now, you know what? All of you have been on here before, so this will be fun. And I think, John, you need to become a co-host. I really do. You just about all that. <laughs> well, you know what? In my introduction, I talked about this new and exciting thing that will be happening in our classrooms. Tell us about it. What's going to happen? What's going on? Well, we are excited, Renarda. Um, Cumberland County Schools, along with the state of North Carolina, will be implementing a, a new curriculum for the 12-13 school year. Um, this curriculum has been developed and done in collaboration with states, other states and, and organizations that help to really bring our level of education to a point where our students will be prepared to compete globally. They'll be ready not only for college if they choose or if they choose the career field, they'll be ready for that. Um, okay. You probably have heard the terminology Common Core. Yes, I have. And, and that, is, that is part of what will be implemented in, in our school system for all, in all our classrooms next year is the Common Core State Standards. And you know, I'm sure a lot of people have heard Common Core and may have even heard Essential Standards and um, you know, just all the terminology and kind of felt a bit intimidated by it. But it's really a very simple con concept, correct? It, really it is, is, it is. And, and we actually, we have a standard course of study in North Carolina and uh, we're going to continue to have a standard course of study. And what that involves is uh, we started with a new curriculum with English language arts and math mm -hmm. and that became known as the Common Core. That's the Common Core. That is the Common okay. Core. But we have um, a number of other uh, content areas, social studies, science, uh, the world languages, PE, art, music. Well, that curriculum has also been uh, going through a revision. And so we will have new standards, not only in English language arts and math, but in also all the other curriculum areas. Now those and other, that okay, together mm -hmm. forms our standard course of study for the new year. Okay, so we have the Common Core, which mm -hmm. is English language arts, and then the other subjects. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
are essential standards, correct? Right. And so when you put them together, one plus one equals the new, <laughs> new common, standards. okay, the new, the new standards. standards. Okay, boom, okay, I'm, I'm there. I'm yeah. really there, I'm there with you all. Now, let me ask you this. <clears throat> what has taken us a bit to align ourselves with what a lot of other states are doing as far as, you know, everyone singing off the same sheet of paper? And it is that way with the Common Core. And in fact, the Common Core is just that. It's a common set of learning standards that have been developed and state-led um, by a consortium of, of leaders, um, educational leaders, business leaders, um, experts in the field of, of research around what it is that students need to know and be able to do to be successful. Um, so it really means having a very clear and consistent and coherent set of standards that all of our students will have access to in North Carolina as well as other states across the nation. Um, the Common Core State Standards Initiative is um, stand, our standards that have been adopted by well over 45 states in the United States. So you can, it certainly gives a consistency across states. So if a child moves from uh, out of state into North Carolina, they will be taught the same curriculum. So it's, there is a, a definite benefit for our students that are very mobile. Um, and with Fort Bragg and, and us being a military community, mm -hmm. that very well will impact us in a positive way. That's good. I know when John, when you were here the other month and um, Renee was here and we were talking about race at the top funding and those types of things, that was one of the, the different, you know, one of the topics we discussed about, you know, that seamless type of education across the board for, the, for our country. It is really outstanding that, you know, especially here in Coleman County and the Coleman County school systems that we can offer uh, for all our children, whether they go from one school to another, they're going to be getting the same education. It's, a, it's an equal playing field. And it's, it's really not just Coleman County, the state of North Carolina, and in the United States. So we're excited that we're able to be together as a unit and work together to, for the better of our children. That's good. And something that you mentioned as well, Allison, as far as um, a consortium of people coming together, mm -hmm. I know federal government can't necessarily get involved in this. Right. So it was what, um, governing body as well as the mm -hmm. heads of education? Yes, um, the National Gover Governors Association as well as the um, Chief State School Officials Association okay. um, came together and, and with a lot of input, not just um, from, from educators but from from many aspects um, to give input into what should be the expectations, what should be that common set of learning standards for, for students. Um, I think it's, it's evident that over time the United States has not stayed at the top uh, of a performance mm -hmm. and we have to look at what standards do we need our students to be able to master in order to be globally competitive and to put um, our students back first in a place where they can, can be that that type of student and and ready and really what we call future ready they're mm -hmm. ready whether their choice is to step into a college classroom or whether their choice is to step into the career field and it was another um, another issue was that the colleges as well as the um, community business the partnerships that we have that the, they were telling us that our students weren't as ready and so with this initiative in place we are aiming to have students ready, whatever their path they choose, whether it's college or career. And that's what the, the Common Core State Standards are intended to do, to okay. have children future ready future. with whatever choice they want to make about that's their future. Good. That's good, that's good. Now you know what, I know in, um, just in, in preparing for the interview, the one thing that, I, that stuck out to me, the big difference in this, is our, our young people will be taught at a higher level they're, they're taught at a high level now, but at a higher level as far as the thinking order and those types of things. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about that. Well, you know, I think our educational leaders and, and our communities have already told us what 21st century skills our students need to, to have. And um, I think that in some ways we've been stuck in the past in right. our education mm -hmm. of our children. And these new standards incorporate all of the 21st century skills that our children have to have and it it does in, in um it does require that uh what we're teaching our children is at a different level of understanding mm -hmm. our children can't continue to just 
be able to spit back facts to us. Right. They have to be able to analyze situations mm -hmm. and uh, evaluate uh, the conditions of things in order to be productive in the workplace or in a college or university. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's As good. you heard Jane talk about evaluate, and that's one of our uh, levels of thinking, and we want to be able to have our kids thinking more than just remembering. Uh, I remember my father-in-law and people in the past have talked about uh, things that have happened in the back about memory poetry, mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. uh, rote memory. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's a time of thinking critically and having young people to really be able to express themselves. And that's one of the things with the new Common Core, uh, about the English language arts, which Jane will talk about later, mm -hmm. about the communicating, about listening, about mm -hmm. using those lifelong skills uh, that you can use in the workforce and along with the, uh, as a college student. It's about real world. It's like real life, actually making it relevant, that it's, I'm able to apply what I've learned and use it in my life. Yeah, because I mean, so often, and I know I did as a student, you know, take calculus or physics or whatever, you know, I was in at the time, well, how is this going to help me? You know, you just don't see how it, you know, it's going to apply later on in life. But I guess that's what this is going to do. It's going to make that, like you all were saying, relevant mm -hmm. and really show the student why it's important you're doing what you're doing. Did you want to say something, Jane? No, I was just going to say, to me, the key word here is relevance. Mm -hmm. Because we've got to make our, our learning uh, for our children meaningful and relevant. They've got to see the connection between what they're learning and how that's going to help them be successful. That's and we true. can teach them that. That's true. That is true. All right, now let me ask you this. What should we know as um, parents, or what should parents know about the new standards. I mean, is it something they need to rush out and say, well, let me get a study book or, you know, it, it sounds so heavy. So mm -hmm. what should parents need, I mean, what do they need to know at this point? Well, I think you're right in that they need to know. That's the first step I would say. Parents need to be knowledgeable about the new standards. And there is an abundance of resources available for parents online, whether it's on the Common Core website or our national PTA website or even our local website. We try to put resources for parents. I know that Jane's department has worked diligently um, to put together parent guides for our boys and girls. Would you like to share about that? Uh, and actually those parent guides will be given to all of our students when okay. uh, school starts in a hard copy that parents will be able to have. And, and they're wonderful in that they actually spell out at every grade level uh, K through 12, what children will need to know and be able to do in a way that is organized so that I think it's easy to understand. Uh, as, as we're learning this new curriculum, it's, it's a little challenging for everybody, mm -hmm. new terminology and uh, new ways of thinking about how we're going to be teaching our kids. So when I saw this guide that we worked so hard on, when I saw it in reality, I thought this is going to be a great resource. And of course, it'll be available uh, online as well on our uh, website. So uh, parents can access it that way, but they will be uh, having that hard copy come home that first day of school with their children. Okay, so parents should definitely check book bags yes. and everything else <laughs> so that they can make sure they get the right. document. Okay, that sounds good. And I know we talked about you know, a higher level, a higher order of learning. But how is what they're doing now compared to, or what they've done in the past compared to what will be done? I mean, can you talk a little bit about that? Well, if I could just take uh, this one example, I think this is uh, a huge uh, emphasis that we're going to see a changeover in, in what our children are reading. Uh, we have focused primarily on uh, reading literacy and, and reading for enjoyment. And uh, we know that our children have to be exposed to reading more informational text and more complex text. If you'll take that uh, old example of us having to read a, a manual on how to start working our VCR. Oh, well, no. that's a different kind of reading than a child experiences when they're reading a, a novel, for mm -hmm. instance, a fiction book. And so we've got to teach our children how to read that way and how to think that way. And so that reading of informational text is going to be a big difference that our parents will see in that material. Also, uh, I think the level, uh, the text complexity is going to mm -hmm. increase. Our children are going to have to uh, read uh, more deeply and read more complex text 
at an earlier age. Okay. And so that is also going to be something that our parents, it's not so much now, Renarda, about uh, just covering material. Mm -hmm. It's about covering it in a, in a deep and complex way, uh, maybe less uh, specific um, topics or, or standards covered, but in a more, uh, a more complex and deep manner. Okay. And they'll see that as a difference. And, and I'm just speaking of in the English language arts. Okay, well, you know what? Can, I, I know, John, you want to jump in. Can, can we take a quick break? And then, is that all right? It'd be great. Okay, all right. When we come back, we'll let you, okay? Thanks. All right, so don't go anywhere. Stick around for more Get Connected. I'm a single mother of two kids. I work a lot. We do miss a lot. He dropped off for a whole month. Sometimes I would talk to him and he wouldn't even turn around and look at me. I just get frustrated because in any way that I talk to him, it just doesn't go through his head. I didn't give up because there's always hope. Give your teen the boost they need to graduate. Call 1-877-4-A-KID or join us at boostup.org for tips and advice. We need a hat. <laughs> and why do we need a hat? Hmm? When you talk with your child, you build vocabulary. And learning starts long before school does. For more tips, go to bornlearning.org. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Get Connected. Our guests are Allison Violet, the Associate Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction in the Cumberland County Schools, Jane Barnes, the Executive Director of Elementary Education, and John Gibbs, the Executive Director of Secondary Education. Now we're discussing the new standard course of study and the impact it will have on our classrooms. Now you know, before we went to the break, Jane, you shared with us how um, the curriculum is different in terms of reading. John was chomping at the bit, and no, I'm joking with you, John, to share with us information, I believe, about math. So what, what is going to be the difference in math? Well, we want our students to be critical thinkers. We want them to uh, be able to figure out things on their own. Uh, you know, in the past, it's always been formulas and things of that nature that were drilled into students. Uh, and those will be necessary to a certain extent, but with a, it's different ways of thinking, an opportunity for our teachers to be facilitators and our teachers, to our students, to work hard on how to figure out things, to, to be more conceptual okay. uh, and just being able. It's more than one way to do things. Things, and students are so bright and they can figure those things out so let them continue to just work together and communicate together and they can also work together in small groups to figure out things and of course that gives you better skills when it comes to the college readiness and it comes to the workforce mm -hmm. okay. I think in the past we've seen um, our math curriculum has been about content which of course this will be as well but there's another piece that's been added and that's the mathematical practices and that's what John's talking about the habits we want our students to have okay. to be mathematicians so that they can analyze so that they can be able to attend to precision use tools be able to to think of you know in, a, in an abstract kind of way so they're actually there are content standards and practice standards when we look at the math curriculum and, and that is k-12 so so our teachers will be infusing mathematical practices along with their teaching of the content. That's good. And I know that our um, educators, our teachers and what have you have gone through professional development to make sure they're all singing off the same sheet of um, mm -hmm. music as well. And that music that they're singing off of is the content. That's what's the same. The Common Core or this new curriculum uh, does not tell how it should be taught. Teachers still have Okay. that flexibility to be the teacher that they are. Ah. So, you know, teaching is an art and a science. So the curriculum, the content is that science. This is what's got to be taught. But the way I teach it as a teacher, that's my art. So that creativity, they yes. get to use that creativity. Yes. Perfect word. Yeah. Yes, that's they good. get to still. Right. This does not tell teachers how to teach. It tells teachers what to teach. That's good, that's mm -hmm. good. Now, once they've, the, the young people, our children, have learned what they need, how are they assessed? Let's look at that assessment piece. Well, 
you know, you can look at assessment two ways. You can look at what we call our end of year assessments, and educators call that our summative assessments. It's at the end, as well as assessments that are happening throughout the school year, and we okay. call those ongoing assessments or, or formative assessments. But in terms of the end of year assessments, much like we have end of grade and end of course tests now, we will see those next year. But because of new standards, there will be new tests. Um, we will still test children in grades three through eight with an end of grade test in reading and math. Okay. Um, there will also be an end of grade test for science in grades five and eight. For our high school students, they will be tested in the English language arts area, which will be actually, um, our high school students will be tested with an English two test, a algebra one test, and a biology test. Okay. So those are the areas that will be our end of grade or end of course um, subjects that will be tested um, for next school year. And new tests have been developed by the Department of Public Instruction. Um, we actually have field tested some of those items this school year okay. so that they can start you know, calculating how and what items should be used and, and how the scoring should be done. But the formative assessments to us are what's most important because it gives us a chance for our teachers to find out along the way what what's students are learning. Right, right. Um, and the summative assessments? Summative the, the, end the end assessments, but okay. the formative assessments. John, you want to share about the formative assessments? Yeah, it's real-time assessments. Uh, we're very fortunate uh, with our Race to the Top. We have Classscape is a, one of our tools for assessing. Uh, this year, uh, newly implemented newly implemented was we used 333,000 different assessments this year throughout our throughout wow. our schools mm -hmm. in grades 3 through 12 uh, and this what I mean by real-time assessment is a teacher can uh, give a five question quiz and and get immediate feedback immediate results immediate data to to restructure their teaching because uh, our teaching is only as good as our learning. Exactly. And we want our kids to understand. Uh, I've been, we have what we call uh, smart response systems, where oh, it's yeah. the clickers. I've seen those. Yes. That was really, I went to a classroom and the kids, I mean, the young people pressed it and the teacher got to see who was getting it, who wasn't, you know, and that, yeah, it was immediate, immediate. immediate. And think about adjusting instruction. Oh, so wow. I see that, that you have it or you don't have it. If you don't have it, what do I need to do differently as a teacher to, to help sure you? you. Uh, mm -hmm. exactly. And so there's it's, certainly a place for that summative or end of the year assessment, but uh, the real change in, in behavior happens when we're assessing what our children have learned all along. And so that formative assessment is, uh, it drives the uh, instruction in a classroom, or it should drive the instruction in a classroom. Can't wait till the end to try to fix mm -hmm. something. Need yeah. to know along the way exactly. what's going well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. exactly. And it's, all, it's, it's not all about a grade. It's about mm -hmm. learning. It's about getting better. It's being better today than you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want our teachers to do and our students to do. So when it comes to the end, that we're going to have great results as we did this year. All right. That sounds good. You sound like a coach. Did you ever coach? Uh, about 19 bit. years. Okay. <laughs> Yes, not today. It sounds just like a coach. That's good. That's good. Now, what can parents do to support their children at this point? What are some things that they can do to support their children? Well, I think when you, when you realize that this new curriculum is all about being future ready, whether that choice is, like I said earlier, to go to college or to step into the workforce, um, having children ready for that. And, you know, from a secondary standpoint, John, is it, is it ever too early to start talking to children about those options? No, they all have their dreams. And, you know, our, our job as administrators and, and employees of the Cumberland County School System is to give those students opportunities. Uh, and that's part of the new curriculum for next year. Uh, next year, uh, we offer four social studies classes in the high school level. Uh, now, instead of just U.S. History, we have American History One and American History Two. And then our Future Ready Core, where all our kids now are going to four mass. So the rigor is there. We're pushing students and giving those opportunities to do what they want to do, whether it is college or whether it's the workforce. Okay. So you can start having those conversations with your child as early as middle school about what do you want to do? Do you are you want to go to college? Do you want to go into the workforce? Let's talk about your plans of what you want. So that's that's one thing I think parents can do. I think it's also important that parents build strong relationships with their schools. Uh, with the teachers, with the administration, be involved, ask questions, you know, understand how you can support and help, mm -hmm. help students daily. Um, 
our schools welcome the involvement of parents. Um, it, we can't do it alone. We recognize right. that parents are the first teachers. Exactly. And to collaboratively together, we, we can, can mm -hmm. make it happen for kids. And we always go back on that adage, you know, it takes a village. It and does. It really does. It it's, does. It, that has not changed at all. You know, in the beginning we talked about also staying knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. Parents need to be knowledgeable about this new curriculum. And there are resources available for parents. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, we've had several states that have been piloting the new curriculum and they have developed um, an enormous amount of resources that are available through the, PT, the national PTA organization, oh, okay. through their websites, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and we have adopted those um, resources through our state PTA that parents can access information. And we've taken it down to our local level and what we are able to provide for our parents as a district so that they can understand about the changes and, and uh, the new curriculum. And then I know of individual school sites mm -hmm. that are already working hard to develop additional resources for those parents that um, are seeking that information. And that communication is key because our principals will have available to them all of this information to share with parents. That's and good. so we, want, we need parents asking questions and schools offering up information and uh, we just need to let people know that it is available. That's good. And I know if they want to get information, they can visit the Cumberland County Schools website. Yes, absolutely. That's www.ccs.k12.nc.us. We'll probably show it a little later on, you yeah. know, in the broadcast. But once they get there on the site, then where should they go from there? We do have a link that mm -hmm. says Curriculum Updates 2012-2013. If you click on that link, okay. it will take you to a page that has numerous links, whether it's to the National PTA, the State PTA, actual Common Core website, mm -hmm. the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. Um, okay. All of those links are there. We wanted to make it very accessible for parents, so we invite them to, to access that. Um, and like Jane said, Every child will come home on the first day of school with a hard copy of a parent curriculum guide that's specific to their child's grade level. That's great. Now, I'm looking at the clock on the wall. We're almost out of time. Are there any last words you'd like to share with our viewers about this new standard course of study? I would say that, like you opened in the beginning, this is an exciting time. We're excited that North Carolina uh, is a part of this curriculum reform, that we are going to be preparing students for a future where they can be globally competitive. Our standards are going to prepare them and make them ready. Um, and as an educator, I, I'm proud to say that we're a part of that, that we are, are going to be preparing students for a world where they have options, where they have choices, whether that is to go to college or whether it's to step into the career field. All right. Well, and it is exciting. Mm -hmm. It's an exciting time for all of us. And our mm -hmm. teachers are feeling it, and um, our, our kids, I think, are even talking about it. And mm -hmm. so we just need to get everybody talking about the excitement that's ahead for us. That's good. And I guess our coach wants to say hurrah. Well, we are. We want the parents just to keep pushing their children, and uh, you know, the sky's the limit. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all so very much for joining us. We'll have to have you back, okay? Yeah. Please. Okay. Thank all you. Right. Well, on behalf of the Cumberland County School System, we want to thank you for tuning in to this edition of our show and for giving us a chance to help you get connected. Until next time.